I felt a positive energy. No, only in Leicester. All the world. And a team hotly tipped for relegation. Hang on and win the Premier League. Never I thought we can win the league. Never. Well, Ranieri's Leicester pull off the greatest sporting story ever told. It was amazing, it was amazing. Football management is a tough job in a harsh and unforgiving industry. Success is all that matters, and failure is shown no mercy. In nearly 30 years of covering the sport that I love, I've been fortunate enough to watch the great and the good at work, up close and sometimes very personal. But now I want to dig deeper to find out what it takes to be a celebrated and successful manager, what they were born with, who inspired them, and what they've learnt on their way to the very top of the game, the changes they've seen in football, and the changes they've helped create. These are my football godfathers. Claudio Ranieri's long managerial career had settled into a pattern. He'd arrive at a club, stay a few seasons, often winning a cup or two, but titles eluded him. A genial coach, he was popular with fans and players alike, but he certainly wasn't regarded as a serial winner. And then came the unexpected, the miracle at Leicester, the greatest football story ever told. Yet just nine months later, he was unceremoniously sacked. How are you? Welcome. But as ever, bounced back. I'm very good. You look ridiculously well as ever. Yes, always, always. I've come to Nantes in the west of France, where at 66, Claudio Ranieri is managing once again in Ligue 1. He's been ridiculed with the Tinkerman tag and labelled as a nearly man. One day you are up and one day you are down. But the truth is in the middle. Been sacked seven times in his career. When you lose with your heart, it's harder. Sometimes I cry because uh, I don't know what happened inside me. But this is a man who never gives up. Is it almost difficult to believe what you achieved? Everything was amazing. Everything was a fairy tale. It's lovely to see you, Claudio. Me too. And I'm looking forward to looking back over what's been a quite extraordinary career. And you're not done yet, are you? You no. still enjoy it today? Yes, I enjoy a lot. I love my job. Uh, I make my job with a passion. And then I'm very happy. I'm very happy. But you've always maintained that boyish enthusiasm for the job, despite the nature of football, you know, the, the disappointments, the sackings. How have you maintained that I don't enthusiasm? Know. I, I don't know. Maybe it's my character. No, for me, it's, a, it's not work. It's enjoy. It's a hobby. And then for me it's very, very important to stay with the, with the players, uh, to teach, to understand. I bring this character from my parents and they work uh, a lot during all their life. I start to play in the midfield. I arrive in um, the team, in the young Roma team, and I play uh, forward. But I didn't score a goal. And then I start to play in the defense line. And then after uh, two years, they, I changed. I make the May first match in Serie A. What sort of player were you? How would you describe yourself as a player? Oh, as a character, an Englishman. Very tough, very strong, always fighting until the end. It's not important the result, and uh, that is my 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 strength, I think, because I never never lose my my point of view on the pitch, out the pitch. Uh, I know you can win, you can lose, but there is another match. There is another match, and never I'm so happy or so down. No, always I try to stay in the balance in the middle. What did that teach you for the, the rest of your managerial <clears throat> career? But I think uh, this, with, 
never, never give up. Uh, there are uh, so many uh, difficulties, but if you want to, uh, to go around the difficulties, you can go forward. If you can give everything and you can accept everything arrive, you are a strong man. And then in the, the true life, you can, you can be strong or strongest, and then it's, it's important. I mean, that was your first job. You, yeah. you've been in the, you were only in the job for six months. Was there any possibility that you thought, no, football management is not for me? No, at the first year. At the second year, I thought this. <laughs> <laughs> that came later. <laughs> Now I was in third division in Italy, and uh, I start the season without all the players. Then it was very, very hard. And, uh, and then when they suck me, uh, was was very strange because I saved this team, no? So even in the very, very early days, you knew as a coach you were going to face problems, like all coaches? No, I knew uh, there were... Uh, big problem, no? Because change, uh, change the life. Because when you are player, you play. You think to play well. You train well, and your job is finished. But when you are coach, you have too many things to do. In every situation, you have to to be very, very calm, uh, reflexive, and then say that is the way. What was it like working at Napoli, trying oh. to fill the space that Maradona yes, had left? Yes, I said, it's not possible to buy another number 10, because which number 10 we can buy? Because the people, the journalists, all the world make a comparison. And I said, there is a young player here, uh, the fans know him, the players know him, I know him, and I gamble with him. I'm sure he can do very well and start with the Gianfranco and Gianfranco started his career. He asked me, I don't want this player, this player had to stay out of the team. And I said, I choose all the players. And he said, okay, if uh, he go to the, the pitch, I sack you, okay. I put him on the beach. We lost the match. He sacked me the day after. No problem. Bye. You then went to Fiorentina. Three, yeah. four seasons. Four seasons. Real stability. Their first trophy in 25 years. Uh, we won the Serie B. We won the, the, the Coppa Italia, Italia Super Cup. And then, but I, had, I understood that my time in Florence was finished. And then I preferred to go. A new job, a new uh, in open the mind in Europe because I was uh, one of the first coach uh, who goes away in Europe. Was Atletico a mistake? And came to me and say, "Oh, Claudio, if you don't win uh, uh, Sunday, I sack you. You are a judge. You want to sack me? Give him the money and you go home. Never I saw uh, you, a judge who sack the, the coach." How are you? Welcome. Welcome. I'm with football godfather Claudio Ranieri. Building all the time and not getting the glory. Maybe it's, a, it's my karma. Ranieri's dismissal from Napoli meant he'd been sacked three times in his first five jobs. The disappointments, the sackings. How have you maintained that I don't enthusiasm? Know. I'm very tough, very strong. Ranieri decided to look for work overseas, joining Valencia in Spain in 1997. What did you do at Valencia? Was it a rebuilding job there? Yeah. The city, the sea, the food, uh, everything fantastic, but, but not on the pitch. And then arrived a moment where oh, all the club, it's not only the chairman, but there were 80, 20 people. And they say, Claudio, what happened? What I can do? I'm an Italian, I go straight away. I want to make a lot. 
action to try to win. And then you buy a lot of champions, but is not able to make my job. Oh, you suck me. Oh, I change all the team because there are some young players, fantastic, fast, and I want to continue with them. If I stay here, I clean all the all players and I put them. They said, okay, Claudio, keep going, make what do you want, and then we start to make a fantastic season for Valencia. It was at Valencia, yeah. where in Romario you have a big, big name player. Yeah, what I saw with his foot, unbelievable. His foot is, uh, well, our hands with the ball. No, oh, nothing, nothing. He won. I understood that he wanted to stay with the lot champions. He was used to stay with the lot champions. He didn't want to stay in Valencia. And then he came to me and said, Oh, coach, I understood his philosophy, but help me. I want to go back in Brazil because I want to play in the World Cup. And I come back. I spoke with the chairman. I say, Chairman, Romario doesn't want to stay. He's not happy here in Valencia. He wants to go. And I lost a, a fantastic player. <laughs> Now, when you have as long and distinguished a career as yours, you are going to make some mistakes yeah. with the clubs or the teams that you choose yeah. to coach. Yeah. Was, I, was Atletico a mistake? Yeah, yeah. There was a Jesus Gil, the owner of Atletico Madrid, who, who, came, who called me and said, Claudio, we make a fantastic team. We make, I want you to come here and I buy a very good players. I said to the chairman, uh, if we buy two good players, we can fight against Barcelona, uh, Real Madrid, because uh, the team is grew up, is growing up. But when I went to, to Atletico Madrid, uh, the, the, the bank, the huge, closed the bank, and he can buy any players. We were in, uh, again uh, in a UEFA Cup. We were in, again uh, in, uh, in uh, Copa del Rey. And uh, he came to me and said, oh, Claudio, if you don't win uh, uh, Sunday, I sack you. You are a judge. You want to sack me. Give him the money and you go home. <laughs> I shouldn't I say, laugh. Yes, yes, it's <laughs> true. Is it true? I say, never I saw uh, you, a judge who sacked the, the coach. <laughs> Come on, give me the money to me, to my staff, and I go home. And he gave me the, all the money. It's unbelievable. Yeri's poor grasp of English led to problems in the dressing room. Things were getting lost in translation. You couldn't speak a word of English, and it's so central to a coach's job to communicate. Yeah, the Italian people speak a lot with their hearts, and then I think I communicate a lot, you know, because the enthusiasm, I show a lot, and the football is very easy, and we make a very, very good group. And then with the John Terry, young player, Frank Lampard, young player, we can make a very good relationship. What did you see in a young John Terry? John was amazing. I saw him so strong with the head or personality. Oh, I said, I want to, him train with me in the first team. And slowly, slowly, I gave to him the opportunity to play in first team. And what did you see in Frank Lampard and how important was he to you with what you did at Chelsea? I said, Frank, remember, I'm an Italian coach from the midfield. 
to the other goal, the opponent goal, you are free. But I want to improve you from the midfield in the in defensive way because for me you are a fantastic, fantastic midfielder. He come and go on the the brink, and then the brain rest there. And Franke was a champion. <laughs> I brought you a little present to remind you of something. Do you remember this and how important it was? Uh, John Franco is. But look at the match as well at the bottom. We delivered, of course, to one at the end. But that changed everything because... Yes, we achieved the fourth place to go in Champions League. At that point, Roman Abramovic by the club. Changed the story of Chelsea. Football had never seen spending like it. More than a hundred million pounds worth of new players arrived at Stamford Bridge. All of a sudden, this guy arrives. He says, "What do you want? Spend what you like." Yeah, it was the first time in my life <laughs> because never I tried to do this. It was amazing. It was amazing to to try, but it was also difficult because in in, in July it's difficult to find the, the right players. No, and then. I want Makalele 100%, and I push one month before Roman believe Makalele because uh, there is a, a lot of champion in uh, Real Madrid, and Claudio wants Makalele. And I said, but if we bring Makalele, we bring the battery of Real Madrid, uh, we put a very good battery in our team. And at the end, Makalele made a fantastic career in Chelsea. Everybody uh, called me Tinkerman, no? and, and then uh, this year more. I have a, more, a lot of uh, possibility to, to say, oh, Tinkerman. <laughs> you have always emphasized changing tactics, changing positions yeah. during the game. Yeah. It was in England you were dubbed the Tinkerman. Yeah. We start the season with the Sun players, and we continue to buy and arrive new players, new players. And I try to find the solution, and then I have to change. It's normal. I have to change because not all the players make the precision with me. And not all the players were very, very in fitness. And then I had to wait who is in good condition and put in the squad. Do you think that name was unfair? Unfair? No, it's OK. Tinkerman. Then I changed with the thinker man. I was much better. <laughs> <laughs> I want to win. I am an ambitious coach. I have ambitious players. I like the pressure. That night at Highbury, when you beat Arsenal, and the tears came. Yeah. You weren't afraid to show your emotion, were you? No, because never we won against uh, uh, Arsenal. We were always very close. One nil for us, one one. Uh, oh, we lost. That's unbelievable. And the day I said, I don't know why inside me I was sure we won against Arsenal. We go in the semi final. And the uh, and, uh, other player said, Don't worry, we won. Tonight we won. And also to Roman, I said, this is the right day to win against Arsenal. And we won. I was so, so happy. Is that the, the first and only time you've cried on the side no, of the football no, pitch? No, 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 no. Look, I make this job for the emotion. For, and then sometimes I cry because uh, uh, I don't know what happened inside me. Uh, but it's a good. I, I like to, to cry for something, for the emotion, no? I love this. If you had your time again, would you have done anything different in the semi-final against Monaco? Yes. I wanted to be Italian there. I was an Italian coach there. 
because uh, we were 1-1, one, one, we were in 11 versus 10 men. Mm -hmm. During the half time, all the players, come on, we win, we win. And I make a change. I take out a defender and I put Hasselbeink. We had uh, two or three chances to score a goal, and we missed a chance. And they, with the two counter-attack, they made, they made two goals. It's unbelievable. I, I suffer a lot for this. Do you think that was the beginning of the end at Chelsea? I think so. It's the life. I don't know. Maybe it's, a, it's my karma. Because look, I build Fiorentina and then I go. I build Cagliari and I go. I build Valencia and I go. I build Chelsea and I, after I go, then that is my karma. But you're building all the time and not yeah. getting the glory. Yeah. <laughs> but the glory arrived with the Leicester. You just had to wait a while. Yeah. I wait, I wait, I wait, and then arrive with the Leicester. <laughs> it was a big mistake, but I make this with my heart. When you uh, lose with your heart, it's, a, it's harder. I'm with Claudio Ranieri, a football godfather whose managerial journey has seen him coach 15 club sides in four countries. For me, it's, a, it's not work, it's enjoy, it's a hobby. A man who stands his ground with demanding club owners, often paying the price for his principles. You want to sack me? Give him the money and you go home. If you could go back in time, what would you say to a very young Claudio Ranieri who was just beginning his coaching career? But look, when I start my career, I said it will be very hard. But it's important you remain an honest man. And then I am an honest man. Valencia is one of the, the best uh, clubs in, uh, in Spain. And that is important to continue and to maintain the club in a level. When you went back to Valencia, do you think it was a mistake to return, especially as Benitez had done so well with him as well? Yes. It was a big mistake. But I make this with my heart. Because the people in Valencia prayed me to come back. And I said, OK. But I was sacked. And that was my big mistake. But when you uh, lose with your heart, it's, it's harder. What does it take out of you? Is it physically draining? Is it mentally tiring? After Valencia, I was so down, and uh, I tried. I tried to recharge, but was so down. You had to charge the batteries to your players every time. Mm. But who recharged the batteries to the coach? Chose Parma. Why? The they, they were duped. They the, were the, re the risk. The risk because I'm crazy. I'm crazy man. <laughs> well, that could, have, that could have finished your reputation. Yes. But I was sure. You took a team that everyone said was going to go down. I was sure to save the team. I was sure. Did all your friends say you are mad? Yeah. <laughs> I'm mad, totally mad. <laughs> I arrive in Rome when the league started. Mm. I take a Roma zero point after three matches. And we lost the league for half an hour. The last 30 minutes. We won in uh, Verona against Kievo, Inter Milan, one in uh, Siena in the last 
30 minutes, about 20 minutes. That is the life. That must have hurt. Yeah, what I can do. Did you ever think this is just not going to happen for me? I'm, I'm destined no. not to win a title. No, and sign me, I was sure I got to win. I got to win something. I got to win something. Always inside me. You said earlier that Atletico was a mistake. Was it the same with the Greece national team? No, I wanted to understand the difference, the difficulties, manage a team, manage a national team. But when I arrived, I saw there was an no organization, no nothing, nothing. Did you feel, after it had gone so badly and the, the chairman of the federation was very vocal in his criticism of you? No, no. He said, OK, I make a big mistake to bring Claudio. We mm. don't need Claudio. We need another... Different type of coach. Different type of coach. When you look at your career at that point, where did you think your career was going next? How? I always positive. Always I am positive. And after Greece, I said, OK, now there will be something good. Um, I am very uh, recharged with the batteries. I'm very hungry. I want to show the best, my best. And then something good happened. Something good? Fantastic good. <laughs> There is a, an all good club in England, and I'm very proud to stay here. I'm very happy to start the new season. Uh, my goal is make one point more next season. This is our goal improve season after season. When you arrived, many, many people were saying, Oof. Why? Mm. Yeah, I know. I understand. Did you feel you had to? No. I felt from the first, from the first friendly game close to Leicester, because we made three, four matches close to Leicester. Local teams. When, when we come back you know, from the preseason. I don't know why. The fans start to make run here. Oh, hey, I didn't understand at the beginning, no? And my fitness coach came and say, Claudio, the fans chant for you. No, say, sing for you, tell them. Oh, I'm sorry, I said, oh, sorry. I was so concentrated to understand the team. I didn't understand the fans. <coughs> but from the beginning, the fans uh, love me. Always when I arrive at the team, I am full of energy and I give the energy to the team. But in Leicester, something special happened. The energy that I give, a lot of energy, come back to me. First matches, we were down to nil, and with 2-2, two -two or 3-2. And uh, it's unbelievable how the opponent were winning to nil when we scored the first goal. Our fans believed, but also the opponent, I think, believed now Leicester draw or win the, the match. It was true. And slowly, slowly, this kind of a football, this kind of the performance gave a lot of enthusiasm to the players. When Jamie Vardy started his record-breaking run, scoring consecutive games. 
There was huge excitement because we'd never seen anything like it. Jamie's is a fast, uh, faster than the light. <laughs> continue to build eh, a solid foundation and then start to improve and arrive in Europe. I love the English football. I love the character of the English football. And I want to blend the English character with the Italian tactics. If we link very well, we can do something good. But never I thought we can win the league. Never. This is the greatest championship win anywhere in modern football. Yeah. Everything was a fairy tale. But did it have a sad ending? Yeah. I didn't understand why, but it's football. Please, please, take a seat. Claudio Ranieri has ensured that he will be forever regarded as a legendary football manager. Never I thought we can win the league. Never. At the start of 2016, with their team surprisingly top of the Premier League, Leicester City fans started to believe that something incredible was happening. I felt a positive energy. No only in Leicester. All the world. You're top at Christmas, and things are starting to build. Yeah. At what point did you think, see your job as managing expectation? It's important to maintain the ambition, but be be, uh, uh, never put the players under pressure. And then for this reason, I put every time a little more, a little more, a little more. And then I say 40 point, 40 point, 40 point, 40 point. Do you remember how many times I said 40 point? Every time. Every time. Until we arrive at 40 points. <clears throat> at that point, I said, OK, let's. Why don't try to go in Europe? If we arrive, it's good. If no, never mind. But it's important to, to try. We arrive in Europe League. And after I said, OK, try to arrive in Champions League. Every time I gave a little more, a little more, a little more. But I think the key was uh, against the city. That was the landmark game, do you think? I think so, because win in that way, everybody believed could be possible, everything. Was that the moment for you? I, I felt a positive energy. No, only in Leicester. All the world wanted we won the league. So many letters from all the world. Australia, New Zealand. America, Canada, Argentina, Brazil, never China. Say what? Just say, come on, come on, come on. Everybody, everybody. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was something incredible. You talk about the energy and going two ways. Tell me about what was special about that group of players. You managed to mould the individuals into a team that could beat teams worth hundreds of millions. All the players are so friendly. All the players believe in something special. All the players help each other in every situation. And that was, uh, was the spirit of the group. I tell to them, Billy Dean, Billy Don. Hey, you are sleeping. Come on. We are in Champions League, man. Dilly din, dilly dong, come on. Where did the bell come from? Always I say dilly din, dilly dong. Also to my, my daughter. My daughter went, hey, come on. Dilly din, dilly dong, wake up. Come on. Ale. <laughs> we shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved.
but we've still got to do that one step yet. And yeah. fair enough, Chelsea, do us a favour, please. You go to see your mother in Rome for lunch, but then you come home and you didn't want to go to the match, did you? Ah, no, 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 I didn't want to go there. I was uh, at home with my wife and my staff. At the, the middle time, we have a dinner. When uh, Cahill, who scored with the header, uh, was amazing because uh, uh, at the point that there were my, my wife uh, said, oh, come on, um, a hazard, no, because it didn't come back to recover a ball, no? And I said, no, 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 leave him forward because you have to score. Leave him, leave him, <laughs> stay calm. <laughs> <laughs> and after five minutes, Hazard makes a scoring goal. <laughs> What do you remember of this celebration within your living room? Oh, yes, in the living room, just to jump, a bottle of champagne. You saw the pictures in Jamie Vardy's house. It, it, it was packed. That yes, celebration. I, I, I didn't know. I didn't know they were all... You didn't get invited? No, 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 no. I was, <laughs> I was in my house. No, but, but maybe uh, the players uh, knew that I was in, in Rome with my mom. Yes. And they didn't know I came back early. Were well, you watching the thing? He's drinking, he's drinking. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fine, it's a fine. <laughs> This is arguably the greatest championship win anywhere in modern football. Yeah. And that is a huge statement. When you tell me Leicester City, well, wow. It was amazing, it was amazing. Everything was amazing. Everything was a fairy tale. Is it almost, to this day, difficult to believe what you achieved? And that's not questioning your ability as a coach, mm -hmm. but it's taking a club the size of Leicester, with the budget of Leicester, who narrowly avoided relegation against huge, historic teams. You beat them all. Yes, I understood what we did. But it's done. It's done. Always uh, stay in my heart, in my memory, and I think in the memory of the older people and I think the heart of the Leicester fan. And I'm happy for this. I'm very happy when I see our fans happy. Has it changed your life? No. Really? Really. Look, I'm here to fight, to do. What to change? Why? Why have to change? Many, many things that are required to be a top, top coach. What do you think is the most important quality to have? I think the enthusiasm that you can give to your players, the positivity, the strength, and the opportunity to improve in every situation. Uh, to my players, never I say, oh, we, we lost because uh, you make a mistake. Never I blame my, my players, never because all the people make mistakes. But it's important to understand why you make a mistake and work for improve this mistake. The huge breaking news we are just receiving from Sky Sources is that the Premier League champions Leicester City have sacked Claudio Ranieri. Claudio, how do you feel? I feel good now. I feel you really, you feel good? Yes, of course, because uh, what we achieved in Leicester, uh, I hope could uh, uh, happen again, but it will be very difficult. Was it emotional with the players in there? No, 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 it was uh, normal. 
Okay. Do you feel stabbed in the back, Claudio? Do you feel badly treated? Bye, bye, bye. You know, my words is my shirt with his name. Somebody that wrote the most beautiful history of the Premier League. It was a wonderful, wonderful fairy story. But did it have a sad ending? Do you yeah. look back of the way that it ended? I don't know, because uh, that's just a football. That's just a football. It was an amazing uh, year. Finished the year. I didn't understand why, but it's football. And then change. Very sad. I think um, we all know in football these things can happen. We know that people lose the jobs because of results and ultimately the owners have made that decision. The players themselves were, were gutted with what happened, but in football, that's what does happen. It got dealt with by, by the hierarchy. They're the ones who made the decision, and us as players, we have to take responsibility for that as well, because on the pitch, we weren't getting the, the results that we wanted to either. It doesn't tarnish or spoil your memory of what you did? No, 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 no. The memory is uh, always fantastic, it's unbelievable. Always my heart is full of the love for Leicester fans. It's fantastic and finished. What would you say has been the most valuable lesson you have learnt in your career? Hmm. In the football, one day you are up and one day you are down. But the truth is in the middle. But you're not finished because you seem just as happy and just as enthusiastic as ever. Yes, I'm enthusiastic because I can do what I want to do. And I'm a lucky man because I continue to have a full of an energy. For me, it's my life. My life is uh, my job. What's left for you to do? Would you like to be the coach of Italy one day? I don't know. I read in the new newspaper. If happen, it's okay. If it doesn't happen, it's okay. What do you think your footballing legacy will be? Oh, if they think of, if they remember, oh, the Tinkerman was the first man to change system during the match in 1990. Now so many people change, but maybe they forget the Tinkerman. The flag is mine. It's not the others. <laughs> Have a, a lot of uh, possibility to to say, oh, Tinkerman. All those people that questioned you, and particularly us in the media as well. He can't do it. He's the nearly man. He's the tinker man. And then all of a sudden, you became the man. I think, uh, oh, maybe now they understand who I am. <laughs> <laughs> we are in Champions League, man. Dilly din, dilly dong. Well, Claudio, it's been absolutely fascinating and wonderful looking back over the years for you. And I really hope there are many, many more years to come. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you, my Thank friend. You. Thank you.